This is probably one of the dumbest ideas I've ever had because I struggled so much. This just, I, I, I torture myself, I really do, because this has been so difficult. I clearly hate myself. Trauma. Completely traumatised. Oh. Hello, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with a completely new video. I've not done a video like this on my channel before and I'm going to be ranking Fear Factory's new albums. Now with the announcement of their new vocalist Milo Silvestro this week, I think it was this week? Or within the last week or so, anyway. I thought it would be apt for me to talk about Fear Factory's albums and rank them in my personal preference. Now for those of you who know me from Metal Twitter, it is absolutely no secret whatsoever that Fear Factory are my all-time favourite band ever. I adore this band and I have done for at least 22 years of my life. I've had the absolute pleasure of speaking to Dino Cazares and I'll pop my interview with him in the description box below. But I've also had the chance to have a chat with their new vocalist Milo and I'll also put the interview for that in the description box below. But because they announced the new vocalist recently, I thought it would be a good idea just to keep within the theme of Fear Factory's new era and I'll rank their albums. Now, I'm only doing the 10 studio albums. I'm not doing their EPs, I'm compilation albums or their remix albums. It's just the 10 studio albums. Now, this is just my personal preference and I'm not basing it on which albums have my favourite tracks. I'm basing it on how well they flow for me personally, you know, as an album from beginning to end. So there may be a couple of albums that don't rank as high that might have some of my favourite tracks on them, but as an album as a whole, I'm looking at how they flow for me. And can I say, this has been very difficult. I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't realise just quite how difficult it was going to be. So rest assured, this video was brought to you by my own personal trauma, so I hope you enjoy. Now coming in at number 10 is actually the only Fear Factory album out of all of their albums that I don't like. There is only one album by Fear Factory that I just do not like and that's Transgression which was released in 2005. I think it's the least Fear Factory sounding album if that makes any sense. I mean it didn't have Dino Cazares on it and Reese Fulber wasn't involved in it either and I don't know what it is. I just... It's not a bad album, that's the thing. It's not a terrible album and I'm not dumping all over it at all. But for me personally, I just, I couldn't get on board with it at all. It just didn't sound like Fear Factory and I was actually quite bored by it. There's only two tracks on this album that I like and even then they're not really tracks that I would consciously go to to listen on like a semi-regular basis or anything like that. And that's New Promise and the title track Transgression. Now New Promise was co-written by Mark Morton of Lamb of God and I do quite like that track. It is a standout track and the title track is a very catchy, upbeat, kind of hard, rhythmical song. But overall, the album itself just didn't hit the mark with me. I didn't vibe with it at all. I don't listen to it, really. Those two tracks that I've just mentioned are in my liked playlist on Spotify. But no, it's a hard no for me. Again, it's not a bad album. It's a weird album. It doesn't sound like Fear Factory and it's just, no, not my vibe. Sorry, not my vibe. So number 10, I'm coming in with Transgression. So coming in at number nine is Fear Factory's debut album, Soul of a New Machine, that was released in 1992. Now, fun fact about this album is even though it was the first studio album to be released by the band, it was actually the second to be recorded. Concrete was recorded in 1991, but it wasn't released until 2002. So Soul of a New Machine was actually recorded and released a whole year after Concrete was recorded. Now this was an absolutely iconic album because it mixed the clean vocals with the guttural vocals, which was basically unheard of back then. You always had one or the other and they were rarely mixed. I'm not saying they were never mixed, but they were certainly rarely mixed. And this album is absolutely brutal. And it's gorgeous. I adore this album and I regularly go back to it. You know, you've got the standout tracks on this album like Martyr, Scapegoat, Lifeblind. Those three are my particular favourites of this album. I love this album. And even though I'm ranking it at number nine, 
I don't hate this album, I don't think it's rubbish because I'm ranking it low, it's just the way that the album flows for me, but those three tracks are absolutely stellar and I do listen to them on a regular basis. So number nine, I'm coming in with Soul of a New Machine. So coming in at number eight, I have Archetype, which was released in 2004. Now this album was the very first Fear Factory album that was released without Dino Cazares and I know that there's a lot of controversy surrounding some particular songs of this album or the album in general being a dig at Dino but it's a really good album and there's some stellar tracks on there and it still maintains the core Fear Factory sound unlike Transgression which just kind of went off on its own wee tangent afterwards but there's some awesome awesome tracks off this album. The title track for a start, Slave Labour, Bite the Hand That Bleeds, these are fantastic tracks and they're definitely my favourite of this record so coming in at number eight I have Archetype. So coming in at number seven, I have Digimortal, which was released in 2001. Lynchpin, need I say more? This is such an iconic track. I absolutely love this album and it is the final chapter of a conceptual three-part trilogy that follows on from Demanufacture and Obsolete and it's got some cracking tracks on it. Like I said previously, it has Lynchpin, it has Digimortal itself, it has Damaged. Invisible Wounds is probably one of my favourite Fear Factory tracks and Memory Imprints. It is a solid album. So coming in at number seven, I have Digimortal. Can you tell I'm excited because I'm just firing through these rapidly. I absolutely adore this band. As much as I found this incredibly difficult, I found it very, very exciting to do. So coming in at number six, I have a record that I was absolutely obsessed with when it first came out, and that was The Industrialist, which was released in 2012. And this sees a return to kind of like a concept, like a story-based album. So it's basically about a mechatronic protagonist who is an amalgamation of technological advances, mechanical advances, and scientific advances, all rolled into one to make this protagonist called The Industrialist. And the industrialist becomes sentient and begins developing the will to survive and the will to live. And it has some absolutely brutal tracks on it. The industrialist itself, Recharger, Depraved Mind Murder, New Messiah. I loved this album. And the opener of The Industrialist is so dramatic and it's so theatrical and it just gets you absolutely pumped for this record. So number six, I have The Industrialist. Now this is where it gets very, very difficult for me. The top five Fear Factory albums in my list, I kept chopping and changing because I just couldn't settle on a vibe. You know, I absolutely adore these next five albums. So this was very, very hard for me to rank. But number five, I have Genexus, which was released in 2015. Now this was kind of like a groovy, catchy, melodic kind of record, but it still maintained all of the synth and the industrial sounds that Fear Factory are very well known for. Dielectric of this record, when that first came out, when I first heard this, I was obsessed. This was like a feel-good track for me. See, whenever I felt down or just not feeling myself or going through a depressive episode or something like this, this track hyped me up and it still hypes me up. There's just something about it that just grabs you and it alters your mood and you know everything's going to be okay. And the video for it is absolutely stunning. You've also got Soul Hacker, Protomech, Genexus, Regenerate. All of these tracks I absolutely adore. So number five, I have Genexus. So coming in at number four, I have Mechanize, which was released in 2010. And this is the record that saw the return of Dino to the band. And I'm pretty sure this is the only record that features Gene Hoglin on the drums as well. And it is noticeably more heavy and brutal compared to previous records. I love this album a lot. Industrial Discipline, Power Shifter is one of my all-time favourite Fear Factory tracks. Fear Campaign, Controlled Demolition, and the absolutely stunning closer, Final Exit. I adore this album. To be fair, I adore pretty much all of them apart from Transgression, but we won't talk about that. Shh. But this album, I absolutely love, and it is one that I regularly go back to. So coming in at number four, I have Mechanize. Okay, top three. Here we go, top three. So number three, I have... Obsolete, which was released in 1998. This is the second chapter of the concept trilogy that I mentioned previously with Digimortal. And the trilogy is basically about man and machine, which is a common theme throughout most of Fear Factory's discography, to be honest with you. But Demanufacture, Obsolete and Digimortal specifically 
are the same story arc. It's basically man versus the machine, man almost being destroyed by the machine. When man survives, man and machine realise that they have to come together as one in order to survive. So that's basically the overall story when it comes to this three-part trilogy. But Obsolete is the second chapter. Obsolete is an incredibly popular album and I think this was the album that kind of broke Fear Factory into the mainstream. I mentioned this guy in my last New Metal Monday video and if anyone who has followed me on Twitter long enough knows that I am a huge Gary Newman fan and he features twice on this album, I believe. Not only does he contribute vocals to Fear Factory's cover of his iconic track Cars, but I'm pretty sure he is the spoken word section in the track Obsolete. And this record has some of the most amazing tracks on it. Shock, Edge Crusher, Descent, Resurrection. These are phenomenal tracks. So coming in at number three, I have Obsolete. Okay, so my top two places chopped and changed every day and I've been planning this for about a week now. So I was constantly listening to their albums and the top two places kept chopping and changing and in the end, I just had to settle. I just had to sell. But number two, I have Aggression Continuum that was released in 2021. And this was my album of the year that year as well. I was all over this album and I still am. I absolutely adored this album. Now the vocals for this album were actually recorded back in 2017, but because of all the legal issues and the personal issues with the band at the time, the release of the album actually got delayed until 2021. And we all know that Burton C. Bell left the band a year prior to its release but his vocals were already recorded for the record back in 2017. Recode, Aggression Continuum, Collapse, Monolith, I just, I couldn't get enough of this album. And to be honest with you, I still can't get enough of this album. And that's why it was my album of the year in 2021. So coming in at number two, I have Aggression Continuum. I wonder what number one could be. (laughs) Coming in at number one, I have Demanufacture that was released in 1995. And this album is just absolutely iconic. And it was this album that got me into Fear Factory to begin with when I was 12, roughly. I think I was about 12 years old when I discovered Fear Factory. And the reason I got into them was I was watching Mortal Kombat and I remember hearing this song in the fight scene between Scorpion and Johnny Cage and thinking to myself, what is this? I need to know what this track is. And obviously it was Zero Signal. And what an iconic track that is. The entire album is just absolutely flawless from beginning to end. Zero Signal, Body Hammer, Piss Christ, New Breed, Demanufacture, self Bias Resistor, Replica, Hunter Killer. I'm just going to end up listing the entire track listing of this album. I love this album and I listen to it at least once a week, if not more. You just can't fault this album. And I think a lot of us got into Fear Factory because of this album. Not necessarily because of Mortal Kombat, that was just me personally. But this was an absolute breakthrough album. And considering it was only the second album that they released, and it still stands strong today, it's absolutely unreal. So coming in at number one in ranking Fear Factory's albums, I have Demanufacture. Now I know I've said this a couple of times in this video, but I cannot convey to you how hard this was for me (laughs) because I kept chopping and changing and I vibed with so many songs and I had to keep thinking to myself no you're doing it for the album not the particular songs because I have some favorite songs on Archetype, I have favorite songs on Mechanize, on Genexus, on Obsolete, on Digimortal but I was trying to look at it from how the albums flowed for me not necessarily what my favorite tracks of the albums were. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you could let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to do more ranking videos and you can request different bands for me to rank, that's not a problem at all. Let me know what your preferences are for Fear Factory as well. If you could like, share, subscribe, I really do appreciate the support. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video.